So the rest of the title is or how to have a better divorce. <laughs> separation. At the moment of separation, a terrible thing happens to people. They focus solely on the separation. And the separation is rank. It's putrid. It's like a dead cow. Well, why is that? Why is separation seen as being an ending and not a beginning? And I think it's to do with how we perceive the role of marriage or long-term relationships in our community. We have an awful tendency to romanticise marriage. Just think about cable TV, for example. Think about how many people are tied up in, in productions like Bridezilla. You know, hello. How much emotional time, effort and energy goes in to marriages. It's the gown, it's the, you know, it's the flowers, it's the reception. It's all of that time that consumes. And it's one day, it's one crazy day in the life of a marriage that we hope is going to span many years. But as a lawyer, I'm also cynical. I know that 50% of marriages are going to fail. So what worries me is what we do about divorce. We demonise divorce. We perceive that all divorce is bad. So we come to our dead cow. It's dead. It's lying there. You know, we try to get it up. We try to give it CPR. Get up. Move. Have a baby. Eat grass. Fart. Do something. But the dead cow is going to stay there. So what are we st stuck with? We're stuck with the reality of a marriage and separation. So at that moment of separation, we see no future, particularly for women. And I'll talk about why it is peculiar for women. Women get robbed of their history. The moment a man says, I'm out of here, babe, suddenly, my history is not your history. Didn't you love me? No, I never loved you. I thought we were going to be forever, together forever. No, sorry, I'm out of here. So your past is no longer your past. You no longer share that idea of what you both had. And you've also been robbed of a future. Well, aren't, you, aren't we going to be a family still? I mean, what happens when the kids turn 18, 21? Engagements, weddings, graduations. Where are we going to be? What happens to women in a marriage is that they start to pass their power. They don't mean to. Nobody sits down and says, OK, dolls, I'll vacuum the pool. You do inside the house. I'll do the barbecue. You do the salads. That's not what happens. It's a lot more subtle than that. It's a lot more organic. So women invest in their family, and they invest emotionally in their family and in their marriage. They also invest in status. They don't realise it. And I think there's real conflict around what is a wife and what is a mother, particularly for younger women who are entering into those roles. How does this fit with my identity of myself? So we've passed our power. And then what happens with separation? Gee, I actually took time out of the paid workforce to have kids, and now you're off. So who the hell am I and where to from here? <laughs> what happens in litigation is that we force people in the court process to relive what I call the multiple car crash. Two people standing on the side of a road witness a car crash. Get them within 20 seconds of the car crash to write down what it is they think they've seen. You read those two narratives and you'd swear to God that they've seen a different car crash. Same thing happens in marriages. Yeah, your mum and dad gave, uh, gave us $20,000 deposit for the home. No, no, there was 15,000 in savings and we had to borrow 5,000 from Fred up the road. How are you going to remember 20 years later what the truth is? So in litigation, we're forcing people to go back and relive multiple car crashes where there's this huge chasm of comprehension between the two of them. Two realities that are very real for the individuals involved but bear no resemblance to the other. In collaborative practice, we ignore the car crash. We just move away. We don't care. That's past-focused. Courts are interested in past focus. We're interested in the future. We're interested in the now. How do we actually help this family get past separation? It sort of reminded me of the analogy, a, a sort of um, medical analogy. So let's imagine you're a woman, 45, two kids, teenagers. You've just been separated. Oh, and you've been in a car crash. So you're in hospital. You're in an operating theatre. And there's a team of medicos, and they're doing a fabulous job trying to bring you back to life. And they're doing really, really well. And then a tiny little bell goes off, and that team leaves the operating theatre. And another team comes in. 
and they get to work on you. The only problem is they're there to kill you. And that's what happens in litigation. Your team, your lawyers, are all about you surviving. Uh, not thriving, just surviving. The other team, the husband's team, is there to kill you, is to deny your reality, is to tell you that you're a liar and that their client is fantastic and you're evil. So it's all about the win-lose as opposed to collaborative where we're interested in the win-win. What is the best possible outcome for both parties? So collaborative practice, what is it? We sign a contract. Two lawyers agree to work together instead of apart. We agree to focus on the needs of the family and find out the underlying interests of both the husband and wife, the mother, the father. We also work in a multidisciplinary way. So we work with a financial planner. Why? Because when a woman is robbed of her status, she also gets robbed of her certainty. She has no idea how she's going to feed, educate, clothe children, let alone entertain them, take them on holidays. So a financial planner will do some financial modelling to enable a woman to understand that she can actually thrive after separation. We also work with a psychologist. And lo and behold, the psychologist teaches these people how to co-parent. Because in actual fact, there's never been cradle to grave training about how to be a parent. Kids come without a manual. So this couple have been doing their best. But their best at the time of separation, when you've got a putrid cow going off in front of you, isn't good enough. You actually need help. You need experts. And as I often say to my clients, how many divorces have you done? And they say, not many. And I said, well, we're going to do this one together. We're actually going to work in a team. You're going to be supported. And we're going to reach an outcome that isn't about fairness. It's not about fairness. Why? Because your idea of fair and mine is completely different. I've got a dollar. I'm going to give you 20 cents and I'm going to keep 80. Is that fair? You don't think so? I think so. It's my dollar. I didn't even want to give you 20 cents. So instead we talk about what's acceptable. What can I live with? What can I actually manage? What's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? And we're able to test drive some of these solutions creatively. So we work on option development. In the law, in litigation, what happens is you only get dead cow. You get a lawyer dictating to you what your outcome is. I'll tell you, and what's it based on? It's based on 5% of the separating population. Only 5% of couples go to court to a final hearing. How bizarre is that? 5% of the most dysfunctional families, what I call the mad, bad and sad, dictates to the other 95% of relatively healthy families. So when you go to a traditional lawyer, it's not their fault. They don't know any different. But when you go to a traditional lawyer, they will tell you what the range of likely outcomes would be if you go before the dead cow. And when you're a judge, if you're dealing with that 5%, you give them dead cow. You only get one version of reality. Whereas in collaborative, we test drive many versions of reality. We try them on like a suit. Does it fit? Does it not fit? How's that going to feel for me? So we don't do it in one horrible afternoon where at 4 o'clock your sugar level dro drops right down and you say, I'm out of here. I've got to pick up the kids. I'm, I'm gone. Give him what he wants. Give her what she wants. That's not a settlement. That's a compromise that nobody can afford to live with. So in collaborative, we confine it, the conversations to two-hour meetings with coaching time in between. So I've gone from being somebody who looks after the dead cows to being a coach to enable clients to think about where do I fit into the scheme of things. So what happens when we litigate, we stand on the side of the riverbank and we take a snapshot of a family. And it's the family at its worst. It is putrid. There is no denying it. That's where the lawyers stand. That's where the judge stands. And unfortunately, the counsellors and psychologists, who are much more creative than that, are also asked to comment on the dead cow. So you get reports about the dead cow. What we do not do is think about where does this family need to go to remain a family. So we talk about the continuity of the family. You're just ge geographically separated. You are going to turn up to the 18 birthday, year old birthday parties, the 21sts, the graduations. But you are going to turn up as a family that happens to live in two houses. That's all that's changed. 
and it's about convincing people that that's what they're going to be doing. It's also really important that when you go up the river in collaborative, that you don't go up the river to find difference. You find similarities. You find what the underlying interests are of both parties. For women, for example, they will often exhibit greed. It's actually not greed that you're witnessing. It is fear. It is palpable fear. How am I going to survive this? So you go back up the river to regain your strength and work out who you are, who you really are in your essence. And you're going to find a crystal clear stream that started somewhere incredibly pure and has merged with another stream, your partner. And you've created other streams, your children. And you've created this wonderful life-giving force called a river. It feeds. It feeds the environment. And ultimately, we help that stream get past the dead cow. We know it's there. We know that you can have a better divorce. We know that you will realise that you're going to be where you should be, which is in the beautiful, deep blue sea. Thank you very much.